Hello, my name is Babu. Not Bao Chan, not Bao Long, Babu. Remember that. And this is my last lecture. I was born on November 6, 2003, here in California to my parents, Juan and Nguyen Bui. They were married on December 15, 1994. There are so many words I cannot fully describe them, but loving, caring, beautiful, and generous. Living a life of a student is not easy. Since day one, I've always been a student, not only in school, but at home. I became the optimistic person I am today because of my dad. He always showed me that there is a silver lining to everything, even when there seemed there was no more hope. He inspired me to be very grateful for the things I have such as blankets, food, and a roof over my head. Unlike myself and my siblings, my dad did not get these wonderful things as easily. School back in Vietnam was not easy to afford and the teachers were brutal. He self-taught himself the basics of every subject and was willing to teach lower income families for free. Then there was the Vietnam War that affected my dad's daily life. Even so, he came here to the U.S. getting offered to go to UCLA and brought a more prosperous life for his kids. If it wasn't for my dad, I wouldn't have put the amount of dedication into my education and life today. Even though he often got sick, saw his friends go, and was stressed about supporting his own family, he always managed to smile, making me happy. My mother, on the other hand, taught me throughout my years that being pessimistic was equally important. Me being a carefree person who always saw the bright side in everything led me to be too clumsy to take notice of any consequences. This really came into play during my freshman year as the workload increased and I procrastinated more. My mother is the most influential person in my life. She taught me that perseverance was the key to success. Back then, I was often bullied a lot in school for why I wore, my hair, and even how I acted, which brought my self-confidence down. Like any good mother though, she was always there to keep me going. She once told me that the most confident people out there are the ones who don't care about what other people think, no matter what. Because of her, I am the guy who isn't scared to try new things. And if you really were close to me, you would know I have the, well, let's just say crazy and hyper side of myself. My mom is the hardest working person I know. There are nights where she would not get time to sleep, yet she finds a way to feed and drive me to school every single day. She inspires me to put other people first whenever I can because those are the type of people we need in this world. There are so many times even I can't keep track where we argue such as whether I needed to study or not. I was very ignorant and there were so many times where I wonder why I got her as my mom. Now I look back to see how foolish I've been. I learned that she gave it all to raise me well, especially since her own mom abandoned her with her grandma who yet still didn't raise her well. She independently raised and taught herself, making her, in my eyes, the strongest independent woman. She is my mother and my hero. I am the fifth child out of five kids. Yes, I'm trying to tell you the fact that I am the youngest, and it sucks, because I'm often compared to them for what they achieve, not vice versa. They are a pain to me. Then again, I'm a pain to them, so it's all even. They mean the whole world to me still. They are always the one teaching and giving me advices from the failures they made. They taught me that failure was something to learn and move on. Luckily, I got them to learn from. Looking back at them, they all had a stronger interest in music than I did. Don't get me wrong, I love music. I could play the piano, violin, and guitar, but I didn't want to play it every single day like they did. My parents often compared me and asked me why I wasn't a good musician like my siblings were. The thing is, their passion was fueling them to become better. I wanted to do something different from them so that I would not be compared to them. Finally, I decided what I wanted to do. I wanted to become the first athlete of the family. My mom did not allow us to do any sports back then because her own cousin got injured during practice and she didn't want to take the chance of us getting injured. It took me at least a year to persuade her, but finally, she said yes. Of course, my siblings teased me that I would suck and be the slowest. Unfortunately, they weren't wrong. During cross country in junior high, I was one of the fastest runners on the team, but that was only because no one tried. Though, when I joined in freshman year, things were completely different. Workouts got harder, and we had longer practice. The teasings and jokes that I experienced from family, teammates, and even the coaches eventually turned into motivation to train harder. Each race I ran, I improved. In a way, I had to thank them. They knew I could push my limits even farther. After months of practice and bonding with the cross slash track team, running became everything to me. Well, I did want it to become Sonic as a childhood dream, but we don't talk about that. After blending in with the team, they are my second family, a huge one. They are the number one reason why I don't stress in school. They help me survive through the hardest times and give me a reason to be happy. And for that, I am truly grateful for them. I am grateful for every night I sleep and the mornings I wake up to, eager to start a new day. 
This may seem crazy, but I'm always ready to see what's new in school. School is like Disneyland to me. A front gate, security guards, food, new people, and a whole roller coaster of excitement. I used to hate school because I was not very social, making it harder. As years went by, I made one new friend, which then led to a group. As I learned from each friend, my connection to them became even stronger. Like any kid having a favorite ride at Disneyland, my most favorite part of the day is after school, running practice. Out on the track and streets, I express my humorous side of myself. I do not mind what other people think about me anymore, because I know it makes me more confident. Besides, my friends are crazier than me. On the team, we get to learn from each other and help each other out. I admire my coaches the most because they are the ones who motivate and train me hard every single day, forcing me to try my best and taking their own precious time away. They show true dedication to the team that I was not aware of before. I can remember the hardest and most painful workouts we had, yet I only remember how good it felt for completing them all. Cross country slash track is definitely, no doubt about it, one of the most hardest mental and physical sports to do. Ironically, it takes my stress away as I feel free to run almost anywhere. I always keep my head up because I'm doing this for my friends, coaches, and my mom. I would like to thank every friendship I made with a strong connection because they are the ones who made me to be grateful, less awkward, and successful in life. In everything I talked about, there is either a regret I made or a risk I took. I learned from a great friend, I got this, that you got this. I would like to take this time to remember the regrets I made such as not being grateful for my parents when I was younger, not taking the academic risk I could have, and training even harder during practice. We all live one life and I may never know how or even when it ends. All I know is I do not want to remember what I have not done, but what I have. It's now or never, and I choose now. Be grateful for the family, friends, mentors, and life. They each play a role in my life. Now I need to respect that. Thank you for listening, and that was my last lecture.